Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. Uh, this is going to have to be my last video of the day. I'm headed after this to a diaper party. For those of you uninitiated, it's the male equivalent of a baby shower. Now, in our case, we're just going to be doing a bunch of drinking at various bars, so it'll be cool. Good times. Yay. <laughs> but, uh, I'm in a little bit of a time crunch here. But uh, you know what? It made me actually wake up this morning and start putting out content sooner than I otherwise would have on a Saturday morning. So I feel super productive also. Normally, I don't put stuff out until like the afternoon. So I'm feeling really good about today. Anyway, so in this video, what I want to cover, uh, I'm going to highlight uh, an XRP community member all the way 08 who just launched a, a blog uh, just, just the other day. And I want to share with you, he's put two, two pieces out. I'm going to share with you the, the second one. Um, I'm going to admit up front, although I, I have tons of commentary in pretty much all of my videos throughout when I cover stuff. So even if I'm reading stuff, it's going to be riddled with Moon Lambo thoughts. I'm probably more so in this one going to do some reading because I want to do this to, to highlight him specifically and just let him like kind of speak what he, what he has to say here. And, uh, and then I also got another piece about uh, a lot of people looking to invest in crypto. This piece here, what's the title here? Uh, it's from Daily Huddle. 25 million Americans are considering investing in crypto. So there's a new study out highlighting that. Now, before we get going here, if you would please delicately tap that like button. And if you are a fan of Ripple and XRP, go ahead and subscribe to the Moon Lambo channel. So uh, here, here is uh, here's the piece in question. Um, I pulled up both of them. I'm just going to read one of them. Uh, so the first one he put out, he had actually published in a, in tweet format within the last few weeks or so, and I did I did read it at the time. Um, and he wrote, posted my first article on Coil. This was the original XRP manifesto I wrote. It's public, so no subscription necessary. I'll be posting a lot more on Coil. Very excited to support this platform. And then you can see here's um, the, the second one you posted. And this is you posted 16 hours ago. Right, it's XRP Community. Here's an article detailing how earth-shattering the MGI deal, uh, MGI deal is for XRP and adoption of blockchain. It isn't getting as much attention as Libra did, but one day we will look back and recognize its importance. So, again, here's the first one, which I did read when he initially posted it before it was in blog format, and you should check this out. I, I appreciate his take, although I don't agree on everything. That's okay. I like diversity of opinion. It's very well thought out. He's a sharp guy. You should definitely check this out. And um, then here's the second one, uh, which I am going to cover for you, and this is titled The Importance of the MoneyGram Deal. In an article posted on Yahoo Finance on August 9th, 2019, Brad Garlinghouse, CEO of Ripple, a company that develops enterprise software for banks and payment service companies, had this to say about Ripple's activist stake in MoneyGram, MGI. The MoneyGram deal is really uh, one of the first scaled use cases of a digital asset in production, Garlinghouse said. This is a big deal. If I were betting now, a year from now, the MoneyGram deal will have a more consequential impact on the crypto markets than the Libra white paper, Facebook's cryptocurrency project. Quite the bold statement, but is he right? Consider this. Think back to MGI's Q2 2019 earnings call on August 2nd. During the call, David Scharf, a Wall Street analyst from GMP Securities, had this exchange with Larry Angelilli, if I said that right, uh, MGI's CFO. David Scharf, that's helpful. And then on the warrants, I guess on, uh, on the Ripple transaction, and I know this was asked by a previous caller, it effectively sold 10% of the company and then 10% dilutive to existing holders, and very often sizable transactions like that are based on maybe some really impactful revenue synergies. Here it was kind of unique because it sounds like it's more of a, a cost synergy, but given just the magnitude of that dilution, is there any kind of quantification on how we should think about the potential cost savings in the model? Just not sure how much the real time, and then question mark. And then Larry says, yes, I'm, uh, I'm a little restricted in terms of where that's kind of guiding you, in terms of where that's going to show up. I'm going to tell you that on an EBITDA basis, the way that potential uh, for, for this is, it would awful, uh, offset the dilution for the entire 50 through a combination of, and then it cuts off, David Sharp, 
And I don't want you to divulge anything. You're not permitted to, but maybe a different way of asking it that you could help us with this to, to understand what existing settlement costs are. And then Larry says, now, it really isn't that straightforward, and I we really just are not in a position to go there. I think that over time, as this effect is felt, I think there might be a little more clarity around it. But right now, all we can say is that on an EBITDA basis, we think we have the potential to offset the entire 50 if we elect to draw down. All right. And then he, he continues to write, To the uninitiated, this conversation might not be obvious, so I will attempt to explain. What David was concerned about was the effect of dilution on MGI shares should Ripple execute its option to purchase 20 million worth of additional shares from the MGI treasury. Dilution occurs when the number of shares outstanding increases. Shares outstanding are simply the number of shares available on the open market. This includes the shares that are being held by the company's investors, whether it be institutions, insiders, or retail investors. Shares held in a company's treasury aren't considered in the number of shares outstanding, so there are two ways the number of shares outstanding can increase. A. A company can issue additional common stock, or B. A company's employees or insiders execute options. So why does increasing the number of shares outstanding matter? Well, in addition to changing the percentage of ownership of a company's current investors, there is a very important financial ratio that Wall Street uses to evaluate a company and it's called earnings per share, EPS. EPS can be calculated using this formula. And then it's written there. I'm not going to read it out. It doesn't matter. Uh, this ratio shows you how profit is earned for each share available to the public. And you can clearly see that shares outstanding is the denominator that gets us to this important metric. If Ripple executes their $20 million option, all things remaining constant, EPS would decrease. Analysts set EPS and revenue targets based off their analysis of the financial statements of a company, and this helps them set price targets for a stock. A consensus EPS and revenue target is determined based off the averages of analysts' targets. Publicly traded company reports four times a year and has an earnings call to share their financials for the quarter. If they beat the consensus EPS and revenue targets, the stock price typically rises after the call. If they miss the targets, the stock price typically falls. Fortunately, things never remain constant. Let's highlight something Larry said, which is, I'm going to tell you that on an EBITDA basis, the way that potential for that is, that is, this is would offset the dilution for the entire 50 through a combination of, and then dot, dot, dot. And then there he writes, uh, EBITDA stands for Earnings Before Interest, Taxes, Depreciation, and Amortization. It is simply a measure for the effectiveness of a company's operations and is a good way to compare companies with different structures since it strips out taxes, debt, and non-cash expenses like depreciation slash amortization. Now looking back to the EPS equation, we see net income on the numerator line. Net income is the profit after all costs have been factored in and would include interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. So what Larry is saying to David is that XRAPID will increase EBITDA so much and therefore also increase net income that the number of shares outstanding will not decrease the EPS ratio. You can see in David's initial line of questioning that he is puzzled as to where the increase in EBITDA is coming whether it is cost savings or increasing revenue, and Larry was unable to tell him due to non-disclosure agreements where exactly the offset would be coming from. What we know for sure is that the savings or revenues would have to be very significant to offset the dilution effect to the large amount of shares Ripple would be able to purchase for the full $50 million after the execution of the $20 million option. Wow! And that is, that's the, yeah, that's quite, I hope you guys are hearing those last, that, that last paragraph I just read there. That is key right there. Anyway, it continues. Think about the implications here. These savings and or increased revenue driven by a blockchain-based enterprise solution must be huge, and every analyst on Wall Street will be able to see how big those savings are each time MGI reports their quarterly results. If the potential of this product is that great, Ripple will have financial institutions breaking down their door to sign contracts to use it. By all accounts, and according to their CEO, that is slash was already happening. 
Since that MGI earnings call, their stock is up 23% and was on an uptrend even before that. Let's not forget that get the 160% increase the day the MGI Ripple deal was announced. I'd say Wall Street feels bullish about the potential growth opportunity that is blockchain. The Libra white paper garnered a ton of attention because it was Facebook. The response from news outlets and regulators was loud, but Libra is nothing but a white paper at this point. The project will meet huge hurdles and regulatory red tape everywhere, and Facebook will not get any favors. They used up all their goodwill a long time ago. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> what Ripple has done hasn't garnered nearly as much attention as Facebook, but they are on the, the, the precipice of something big. They have pushed XRP across the threshold of being a purely speculative asset to being one that is actually being used and adopted by businesses. What other cryptos can you say that about? I'll say none. That's me saying that. <laughs> uh, follow the progress of MoneyGram because the deal represents the paradigm shift from speculative assets to actual utility. It is the biggest thing happening in crypto and we are just getting started. We haven't even scratched the surface on what the potential revenue synergies could be that Alex Holm, Money, MGI is a CEO, alluded to on that call. And we're going to work. We're kind of learning to use the platform, but certainly with every incentive to do that, I think that the, someone asked a question. It is largely kind of cost and efficiency driven, but I think there's some real revenue opportunities for doing a lot. And that's a quote from, from uh, Alex Holmes. Uh, that's yeah, that's amazing. Then anyway, so this has been recorded, uh, reported on by a couple of influencers in the XRP community. But here is a potential hint from Ripple CTO David Schwartz at the five-minute mark of the video. Uh, Brad's right, MoneyGram is huge, and most don't even realize it yet. So I'm going to link it below if you want to see that video. You can as well. Hey, well done, man. Um, I I really think that uh, you you brought something really valuable. First of all, to the, to the XRP community because this is a point. That um, I don't think anybody else has been pushing there. Uh, you, I think you did a great job writing this, so I'm happy to have shared this. I hope uh, I hope most of you followed me through to the end of that. I know that was more reading than I would I've ever done on any of my videos, but I I hope you'd agree that it was worth it uh, to share this content with you. Uh, really really cool stuff here, and uh, man. I, this is why I freaking love the XRP community. Everybody can bring something to the table, and I like that we're all sharing what e each other are doing. So it's the coolest stuff here. But, um, next piece here, and then I better wrap up this video. DailyHodl.com. 25 million Americans are considering investing in crypto. New study here. According to a new study, 25 million Americans are thinking about buying cryptocurrency in the next 12 months. U.S.-based Noble Insurance released its uh, study analyzing digital asset trends in United States residents. Uh, willingness to invest over the next year. The report finds from the start of 2018 through May of 2019, the market grew by 42%, with 6.72 million new owners enter the market. Here are some additional highlights from the, the study. Let's check this out. <clears throat> Despite the loss of over 1 billion USD worth of cryptocurrency last year alone, just 10% keep their digital currency exclusively in offline cold storage. That is astonishing. It means it's just sitting there on exchanges. Anyway, uh, next point. Men have been the first on the uptake of cryptocurrencies, but women are now catching up at 35% of all owners. That's cool. Uh, next, 44% of crypto owners are over 35 years old, sitting mostly outside the millennial age group. Uh, fourth point, 37% of cryptocurrency holders own more than $5,000 worth of assets, and further, 8% uh, hold over $50,000 in crypto assets. That's cool numbers. And, you know, I remember I was talking with people. I was even talking with my girlfriend, Michelle, when that first collapse had happened, um, that, that we were a part of anyway, towards the end of, uh, well, beginning of, of 2018. So it would have been January. I mean, it was mid-January. Mid and, um, and I was so new to crypto. I'd been in it a couple months. It was a crazy time to buy in. Seeing XRP go from 20 cents to almost $4, and then to see it crash back down throughout 2018. Weird time for me to jump in. But I remember Mich Michelle, she brought up a concern, and we were so new, we didn't know really what to expect, and I was still learning so much. I know so much more than I did back then, but the concern was, oh man, is it really just over? Like, is, it was because we were. She was saying, you know, it's it's such a it was such a huge um, ramp up in price. It's like, are, are people ever going to come back? We were just positing the question, not that she was saying that they would or wouldn't, and, but that the question was being posed, and it was, is this such a crash that people are going to lose confidence and never come back? 
And I think it's clear to say, especially as I learn more, because I, I didn't have as much of a historical context at that point. I hadn't done all the research that I, um, that I have now done, looking back at uh, you know the, the last decade of the crypto asset class, looking back at how humans behave after we researched um, how they behaved in other asset class, the dot com boom and bust after looking at all of that, and then understanding that utility matters. I ended up getting it all, but I didn't in the moment because I hadn't done the research to that point. And so having gone from that point to seeing a piece like this, which is despite the last crash, and this is always going to be the case, if there's utility to something, if it can actually be useful, if in this case, cryptocurrencies are useful, yes, they're going to have staying power. We don't know what it's going to look like. We don't know how everything's going to be fleshed out, which coins. We don't know all of them that are going to have staying power. I'm confident XRP will. We'll see. I think I'm right on that. But it's neat to see, despite all of that, here you go. 25 million Americans are considering investing in crypto. How about that for a new study? This is not going away, boys and girls. It is here to stay. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau!